This is AHL Explains. I'm Anthony Ledford and today I'm going to explain volatility scaling. Today we're going to look at volatility scaling, which is the other main thing you need to understand in order to understand momentum trading. Now to keep things as simple as possible, I'm going to deal with a single market. And I'm also going to make things simple by considering a daily trading system. So what I mean by that is think of the prices from the market being captured once per day, just at the start of the day, say. And when the prices are gathered from the market, they would be checked. They would be joined on to the previous prices we've already captured from other days historically. And then the trading system would be run. When the trading system has run, it will decide a position that it wants to hold and then you would trade to that position and hold that position unchanged until the next price is gathered, i.e. 24 hours later. Now what we need to think about is the P&L that the positions I hold at the start of the day are going to generate for me over that forthcoming 24 hour period. So let's try to work that out. Well, the P&L is going to be proportional to the number of contracts that I hold and I need to multiply the number of contracts I hold by the price move per contract. Now I don't know what the price move per contract is going to be over the next 24 hours. It's not actually happened yet but what I can say is that the typical size of the price move that's going to happen in that market is going to be proportional to the volatility of the market. That's what volatility is. It tells you the typical price moves, the typical size of price moves that are going to happen. So I don't know what this is, but I know it's going to be about the same size as the volatility of the market. So I'm going to put that there. So I now need to work out the number of contracts that I'm going to hold. Well, the first term that goes in here is just an overall gearing number, and this is to do with the size of the fund and its volatility target, but it's not going to change from, from day to day. It's just a fixed constant. Now, because we're trading momentum, I need to include the momentum signal in here, so I'm going to have capital M denoting the momentum, and I'm going to put a T on there because this is today's momentum value. This would be the output from running the trading system previously. Sometimes this number is going to be positive, sometimes this number is going to be negative, corresponding to being long or short in the market. But this is what we calculated from the previous uh, AHL Explains chapter. Now the idea of volatility scaling is to make the overall P&L that I realise actually independent of the volatility of the underlying market. I want to do something more to this expression so that I neutralise the volatility of the underlying market here. Well, the only way to do that is to put a 1 over the volatility of the market into this bracket here. And then I can have that this vol of market cancels with this. And that's the idea behind volatility scaling. It's to make your P&L that you realise from your trading independent of the volatility of the underlying market. That works really in two different ways. One is allowing you to neutralise the different volatilities encountered in different markets. Some markets have high volatility, for example natural gas, whereas others have low volatility, for example treasury bonds. Volatility scaling allows you to target a P&L risk in both these markets by neutralising their individual, very different volatilities. The other way to think of it is within a market, uh, volatility changes quite a lot through time. So um, if volatility rises, for example, uh, then there is a corresponding shrinking of your overall position that you hold in that market that compensates for that rising vol of the market so that the overall P&L that you generate from that market is independent of that uh, changed volatility. Now anyone who's been watching this carefully will realise that I've done a bit of a trick here. There's a bit of a sleight of hand and this volatility of market and this volatility of market are not the same. They're not the same because I need to know this at the start of the day in order to work out how many contracts to hold. So this is something I have to know at the start of the day. Whereas this term here isn't something that I know at the start of the day. This is actually the volatility that's going to be realised by whatever happens to the prices in the market over that forthcoming 24 hour period. So this is actually a forecast of this. Now providing that forecast does a decent job, 
you can cancel these things out. You don't have to worry too much about it. But there will be times that the forecast volatility and the actual realised volatility don't match up. And understanding how large the discrepancies can be between this and this, the forecast vol and the realised vol, it's very important for understanding the overall risk properties of your strategy. Now we quite often get asked whether volatility forecasting is important for what we do uh, in our style of trading. And it is important, it's very important, but it's not where the profits come from. Profits in this type of trading system comes from a well-designed momentum signal that coincides in its positive and negative values with whether the market subsequently goes up or goes down. Where volatility forecasting is important is for making sure that you're able to appropriately scale your positions and take the appropriate amount of risk through time. In these first two episodes, we've seen two key concepts, where the momentum signal comes from and volatility scaling. The next thing we'll do is look at futures contracts because these are the principal instruments for managed futures trading. Thanks very much.